In today's video, we're going to be creating a sci-fi motherboard. It's going to be procedural, which means we're going to be using geometry nodes and you can randomize it anytime you want. Apart from that, we'll be creating this really sci-fi or realistic circuit material. And on that, we're going to apply all of these different circuit elements. It's going to be really simple. So let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Now we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree after which we'll zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now I'll press shift A and search for a grid which is going to act as the base plane for our motherboard. So let's plug this in and change the size to something that we want. So I want this to be 20 by 20. So I'll just type in the numbers 20 on the X and the Y. Now I need to go ahead and distribute some points on these faces. So let's press shift A and search for a distribute points on faces node. But I want the actual plane to also be present. So I'll press shift A and search for a join geometry so that I can have both the plane that we created here as well as the distributed points that we're going to distribute over here. So now when we look at it, this is what it looks like. Now we don't want this many points to be present. So let's go ahead and reduce the density or instead we can change this from random to poison disk to prevent any overlapping points. So let's increase this distance min until we get a nice distribution. I think a distance min of one will be good enough for my scene. Now on each of these points, I need to instance either a cube or a cylinder. So for that, let's press shift A and search for an instance on points node. Now let's plug this in right after the distribute points on faces node, but I don't want it to be distributed on every single one of these points. I want it to be distributed only on one third of the points. So let's press shift A and search for a random value node and change the type from float to Boolean and keep the probability at 0.333, or you can just type in one divided by three. Now let's take this value and plug it into the selection. And for the instance, let's instance a cube. So let's press shift A and search for a cube and simply take this mesh and plug it into the instance. Now, of course, these cubes are too uniform so let's go ahead and change the scale. Let's press shift A and search for a random value. And now I want it to be random on each of the axes. So I'll change this from float to vector and I'll change the min to maybe 0.1 and I'll change the max to maybe 0.9 and I'll go ahead and plug this value into the scale. So that looks like a really good distribution, but let's go ahead and distribute the cylinders on the other remaining points. So to do that, let's use another instance on points node, or we can take this one and press shift D. For the points, we have to use the same points over here. Here. So let's plug that in right there. However, for the selection, we need all of these values which were not selected over here. So let's press shift A and search for something called a Boolean math node and then change this from and to not. Now, if we take this value and plug it into the input of this Boolean math node and plug the output into the selection, whichever points were not turned into cubes will take on this instance. So for this instance, let's go ahead and press shift A and search for a cylinder and then take the mesh and plug it into the instance. Now let's take these instances and join them into the geometry by plugging it into the join geometry. Now, of course, the instances are way too large. So let's go ahead and reduce the radius down to maybe 0.05. And I think that's a bit too small. So maybe 0.1 will reduce the depth as well to maybe 0.5 and will increase the number of vertices to 128. Now of all of these cylinders that we just created, I want a few of them to remain standing upright. And then I want a few of them to be rotated so that they lie horizontally on the plane and a few of them to be be rotated such that they lie along the y-axis. So again, we want to distribute them as one third pointed up, one third pointed to the x and one third pointed to the y. So for that, let's play around with the rotation. So let's press shift A and search for a vector. And if the vector is 0, 0, 0 while going into the rotation, it's going to remain pointed up. Now, if we duplicate this vector and create another one, which has a value of 90 degrees on the x, it should be pointed towards the y-axis. So let's test that by plugging the vector into the rotation and then changing this x value to to 90 degrees. But since this takes in radians, we have to set the number in radians itself. And 90 degrees in radians is equal to pi divided by two. So just write pi forward slash two, and it will be lying down flat. Now we need another vector that will be rotated such that it aligns along the x axis. So for that, we need to rotate by the same amount on the y axis. So let's press shift D on this vector node, change the x value to zero and the y value to pi divided by two. Now, if we plug this in, you can see that it's going to be aligned along the x axis. Now we need these three to be switched in between. So let's press shift A and search for a switch node. And then we'll just change this from geometry to float because we want to change from geometry to vector because we want to switch between two vector values. Let's take this first vector and plug it into the first socket and this second vector into the second socket. Then let's press shift D on this switch node, take the output and plug it into the first socket. And this one is going to go into the second socket. Now this output is what's going to go into our rotation, but we need to determine which of these are going to be taking on the 
these different values. So we need to actually plug in a Boolean. For that, we'll use another random value. So let's press Shift A, search for a random value node. And again, only one third of them have to be 0, 0, 0. So let's go ahead and change this from float to Boolean. And remember, the false is 0, 0, 0. So I need only one third of them to remain false, which means two third has to be true. So in this case, I'm going to go two divided by three to get the correct probability. And I'll give it a random seed and I'll take this value and plug it into the switch. Now we have one third of them pointed up and the rest two third pointed towards the y direction because of this vector. But I want exactly half of these to turn towards the x axis. So let's take this random value, press shift D and change the probability to 0.5. And again, a random seed and then take this value and plug it into the switch socket for the second switch. Now we have one third towards the x, one third towards the y and the remaining pointed straight up towards the z. Now, yes, it is passing through this motherboard, but that's not really an issue because we'll be only viewing it from the top side. However, we need to now add in some random randomness to the actual scales. So for that, let's shift this a bit towards the side and then press shift A and search for a random value. Now, I don't want them to become distorted. I want them to remain in the same cylindrical shape. So instead of a vector, I'm going to use a float value itself so that it scales by the same value on all of the axes. Let's take this and plug it into the scale and let's change the min to maybe 0.2 and the max can maybe be a value of two. So that looks great, but the cylinders that are lying down on the actual plane are being cut in half. So we need these to actually lift up and we want it to lift up depending on its radius. So it should essentially lift up by its radius itself. Now remember the radius is determined by this random value node. So we can lift it up using the same value. So let's press shift A and search for a set position node. We'll plug that in right here. And for the offset, remember we want it to go up only on the Z axis. So let's press shift A and search for a combined X, Y, Z so that we have control over just the Z axis. Let's take this plug it into the Z, take the vector and plug it into the offset. Now it offsets way too much. And that's because the actual radius of each of these is set over here as 0.1. So we need to go ahead and scale this down to 0.1 as well. So let's press shift A and search for a math node. Let's change it from add to multiply and multiply it by a value of 0.1. And now you can see that all of the horizontal ones lie perfectly on the plane. The vertical ones do cross down, but that does not matter for us because it looks fine enough. Now we need to set material for each of these separately. So let's press shift A and search for a set material node. And we'll start off with the actual base plane. So let's plug that in here. Let's go to the materials and you see the default material is already there. So let's select that over here from the drop down. And then let's press this plus button to add in a new material slot. Let's press the plus button to make it a new material. And we'll choose that for all of these cubes that were instanced over here, which is this particular line. So let's press shift D on this set material and then choose material 001 here. Now I need another material for all of these cylinders. So let's duplicate the set material, plug it in here, come here, press this plus button, add in a new material, and then choose material 002 from here. Now we're pretty much done with the geometry node section. So let's move on to the shader section. So let's just join these areas by right clicking at the junction and dragging it down. Click and drag from here to create a new window and change this to the shader editor. Then we'll press N to remove that side panel and we can zoom in and start messing around with the materials. To actually see the materials, we'll change our viewport shading to render and we'll switch off overlays for the time being. Now the base material that we're creating is going to be for the actual board and that's going to be a very sci-fi texture that's very useful. It used to be easier on older versions of Blender, but now in the Voronoi texture, the option of crackle has been removed. So we have to fake that. To do that, we'll go ahead and change the Voronoi texture from Euclidean to Chebyshev and we'll press Shift D to duplicate it. Then we'll change this first one to F2 and we'll subtract the two distances. So we'll press Shift D and search for a math node. We'll take the distance, plug it into the first socket and this distance into the second socket. Now we have to make sure that whenever we change the scales, the scales are changed together. So let's press Shift D and search for a value node and simply plug the value into both the scales. We'll start off with a value of five, but we might change that later on. Now let's just control Shift click this with the node wrangler enabled to preview what we have. And you can kind of see some sort of a pattern, but to make it more prominent, let's just increase this value. Now this isn't the exact value that I wanted. So let's see what I did. I don't want it to be add. I want this to be subtract. So let's change this to subtract. And now we should be getting the nice crackle Voronoi shape, which is exactly what we wanted. To convert this into the actual motherboard style lines, we can press shift A and search for a wave texture, plug the subtract value into the vector. And now we have the perfect sci-fi lines. Now for better control over this, we can add 
add in a color ramp. So let's move this to the side, press shift A and search for a color ramp node, plug that in right here. And we will be moving this in and out. But before that, let's just choose the colors. To choose the colors, we'll press shift A and search for a mix color node, plug that in right here. And we're gonna use this output as the factor. Then we can change color A to a copper color or a gold color. So maybe something like that. And color B can be a greenish color because that's generally what the base of motherboards are made out of. Remember, while creating motherboards, the entire plate actually starts off with a copper layer on top of it. And then it goes into a milling machine that actually just removes lines of copper, allowing for the connections to be created. Most people would believe that they just add in copper, but that's not exactly how it works. So generally, the lines of copper will be really thick and the separation will be thin. So that's why I think this sort of a distribution is good. You can change this distribution by bringing in the black and bringing in the white accordingly, and you can see how it changes. Now, this might make it look like there are wires of the copper but again a more realistic version would be something like this itself where there's far more copper and much less milled out now i'll plug this result into the base color and i'll control shift click the principled bsdf now i'll make this completely metallic and i'll reduce the roughness to maybe 0.3 to make it nice and shiny now to make these look even more prominent, it's nice if they actually bump out. So to make them bump outward, we'll press shift A and search for a bump node. And we'll take this color, plug it into the height and take this normal and plug it into the normal of the principal PSDF. Now it seems like it's going inward. So to invert that, all you have to do is press this invert button. And now it'll look like it's actually bumping out. That looks great. And we have our basic motherboard created. If you actually zoom in, you can see that the shadows don't look too correct because the edge of this cylinder is all the way over here, but the shadow starting from here. To fix that, you can go to your light source, expand shadow and just switch on contact shadows and that will make all of that better. Then you can start playing around with the materials for the other objects. So let's go to material 001. Let's press period on our numpads to centralize the nodes. I want to make the base color for the squares much darker because they're generally ICs or they're inductors or maybe solid state relays as well. Either way, most of the time they're painted black. I'll increase the metallicness all the way to one and reduce the roughness to 0.4 and keep that as the material over here. Next, for the cylinders, I'll select material 002. I'll make the metallic all the way to one. I'll reduce the roughness to maybe 0.3 and I'll keep the base color all the way towards the white and maybe give it a very pale cream color by just moving it down to about there. That's generally how capacitors, resistors and all look. Again, if you wanna be realistic, you could convert these into real resistor shapes and even the capacitors, you could have different types of capacitors. For the resistors, you could add in the resistor bands for the color code and all of that. But again, I just want this to be as fast as possible to be used in the background of videos. Not everything has to be completely realistic. If you want this to be even more realistic for each of these ICs, maybe you could model a separate IC with all of the pins that come out as well. And you can have those pins connect up to these wires when you place it. So it's really up to you, but I think this is what I'm gonna go for with today. Next, for the lighting, I'll go to my world settings, change the background all the way to black. I'll select the light. I'll press shift D and then move it on maybe the X axis. Then I'll change this light type from a point light to an air area light and then I'll switch on overlays just so that I can see it. Maybe go back to my solid view and I'll just turn this to make it appropriate. Let's move it to maybe this edge or somewhere over here. Place it right about there and I'm going to change the size on the X and the Y to maybe one unit and then I'll increase it on one of the axes a bit more to give it a dynamic shape. Then I want one more to be lighting it from the front. So let's press shift D to duplicate it. Move it about there. Again, you can go to seven to go to your top view and you see this little yellow dot. You can click and drag it to help point your area lamp to the correct place. So I want it to be pointed just like that. Now this one, I want it to be even larger. So let's change both the X and the Y to maybe three units. Maybe the Y this time can become five units. And then if I go back to my viewport shading of rendered, that looks a lot better. Then I'll go to my render properties. I'll switch on bloom and screen space reflections. And for the bloom, I'll just expand this and I'll change the intensity down to 0.02. And maybe I'll clamp it down at four as well. Then you can start off creating the loop. So for that, you first have to place the camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation and R X 90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then you can press GZ to just lift it up and GY to bring it towards the front of your actual motherboard. Then you can press zero on your numpad to go into the camera view. Then you can select the camera, go to your camera settings, change the focal length to maybe 25 units and then press RX and then just rotate it down to something like that. I'm also gonna just move it up a bit and I think that's good enough. Now I'll expand viewport display, go down to passport two and I'll increase that all the way to one. I'll switch off overlays and this is what I currently have. To create the loop, I'm actually gonna move this entire board itself. So let's just go back to solid view, switch on overlays again, press Alt D to create a linked duplicate, choose Y and then move it by the length of the grid. So remember, we changed the size of the grid to 20 units. So we have to 
remove it by 20. So we can just type in the number 20. Now I'll shift select this first cube and press control P and choose set parent to object. Now I can take this one and just press alt D Y 20 and I can just press shift R to repeat that once or twice. Now when I go into my camera view and I switch on my rendered view and switch off overlays, this is what we have. Now I can just select this, expand my timeline, go to my output properties, change the frame rate to whatever I feel is necessary. So in this case, 30 frames per second. End frame, I'm going to keep it at maybe 300 to make it a 10 second long loop. Output folder can be wherever you want to store it. File format, you can choose whichever one you want. I'll go with FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm going to change the container to MPEG4. And output quality, I'm going to choose Perceptually Lossless. Then I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero. And with this cube selected, I'll tap I, location. And then on frame 300, which is the last frame, I'll press G, Y, minus 20. And then I'll press I, location. Down here, I'll press T, linear. And that way, you'll get a nice seamless loop. If you want to see the original speed at which it's moving, you can change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping. And that way, you'll get a realistic idea of how fast it's moving. If it's moving too fast, you can always change this last keyframe to be even further away. And if you think it's moving too slow, you can always move this keyframe closer and make that the end frame. So either way, once you're happy with the way all of this looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a fun and useful tutorial and the sci-fi motherboard texture can come in handy in various ways. I have created a different sci-fi motherboard tutorial and I'm sure I've linked the card somewhere in this video. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. It uses a completely different technique and there's a lot of animation tips and tricks added into that video as well. It was in fact one of the first tutorials that I had uploaded. I will be creating another variation of that where we use this particular motherboard material except we have a few of the lines to be glowing and energetic just like that one. Until that video comes out, definitely check out other videos on my channel because I post videos every single day and I'm sure there's something or the other just waiting for you to discover. Until those come out, thank you so much for watching, keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.